In our previous unit, one of the things we did when we double distributed was a problem like 5a minus 4 times 5a plus 4. So when we do double distribute that, 5a times 5a is 25a squared, and 5a times 4 is positive 20a, and then negative 4 times 5a is negative 20a, and then finally negative 4 times 4 is negative 16. Then we combine our like terms, which is the 20a and the negative 20a, and they wind up canceling each other out. So we are left with just 25a squared minus 16, accidental erasure. Fix that. Okay. So notice that... We don't have a middle term. We don't have an A term because the A terms canceled each other out. That's something to look at when we try to factor a polynomial with only two terms, when there is not an A term, like 25A squared minus 16. We're still going to split up 25A squared. We can split that up as 5A and 5A, but we're looking for factors of negative 16 that when we add the insides and the outside terms, we get zero because there is no middle term. And we can do that with negative 4 and positive 4. That multiplies to be negative 16. My middle terms are negative 20a. My outside terms are positive 20a. And that does add up to zero. So when you have two-term factoring, that's the way we are going to do it. We've previously learned about the product of the sum and difference of two quantities. The result is referred to as the difference of two squares. So the factored form is the difference of squares is called the product of the sum of differences of two quantities, which just basically means it's everything is the same, but one of them is positive and one of them is negative. We're looking for two factors that when we add the insides and the outside terms, we come up with zero. So x squared minus 25. We will still always check for distributive property factoring. This one cannot be distributive property factored. So we will open up two sets of parentheses. Look for a binomial pair. x squared can be split up as just x and x. Two numbers that multiply to be negative 25 that will give us inside and outside terms that add up to 0 would be positive 5 and negative 5. That gives you 5x on the inside, negative 5x on the outside. That gives us 0, so we do have it factored correctly. t squared minus 64, same situation. Can we factor by distributive property? We cannot, so let's try a binomial pair. How can we split up t squared? Well, that can be split up as t and t. And two numbers that multiply to be negative 64 can be negative 8 and positive 8. Inside terms, negative 8t. Outside terms, positive 8t. And that does add up to 0, so we have that factored correctly. 16h squared minus 9a squared. Same concepts apply. We cannot do a distributive property factor. We can split up 16h squared as 4h and 4h. And factors of negative 9a squared, since they both contain a not an a in it, both factors will, so that could be positive 3a and negative 3a. So my inside terms are 12ah. My outside terms are negative 12ah, and that does add up to 0. So we have that factored correctly. 25y squared plus 1. We cannot do a distributive property factor on that. So we try to open up binomial pair. We can split up 25y squared as 5y and 5y. So we're looking for two factors of 1 that will add up to be 0 because, again, there is no middle term. There's no single y term. Uh, since it's a positive 1, we do have to use the same signs. So if I try positive 1 and positive 1, my inside terms are 5y, so are my outside terms, and that adds up to 10y, not 0. If I try negative 1 and negative 1, that's just going to make it negative 5y and negative 5y, which is negative 10y, so that's no good. And do not try 
positive one and negative one because positive one times negative one does not add up to be negative one. Or excuse me, multiply to be negative one. They both have to have the same sign, so we can't do that either. So we actually can't factor this at all. It is prime. We're not gonna get two numbers of the same sign. We have to have two numbers of the same sign to add up to be zero. One of them has to be positive, one of them has to be negative, but I can't do that when there is a positive one that we have to multiply to equal. Finally, we'll finish up with just some combination type of factoring. Uh, 4y squared plus 12y plus 9. Can we factor that by distributive property? Okay, does anything go into 4, 12, and 9? Uh, it does not. So we will open up a binomial pair. 4y squared, can we split into 2y and 2y? Factors of 9, two numbers that multiply to be 9, that will help us add up to equal 12y would be positive 3 and positive 3. 3 times 2y is 6y. 2y times 3 is 6y. That does add up to 12y, so we do have this factored correctly. Another way to write that, since we do, it is 2y plus 3 twice, is to write it this way, 2y plus 3 squared. You oftentimes will see it written this way in a multiple choice test instead of separately. 2a squared plus 10a plus 25. We can't do a distributive property on that, so we'll try to open up a set of binomial pairs. Uh, the only way to split up 2a squared would be 2a and a. Factors of 25 would be 1 and 25 and 5 and 5. And we need to get them to add up to 10a. So if I try positive 5 and positive 5, that's 5a and 5 times 2a is 10a. That adds up to 15a. So that means that will not work. And if we try 1 and 25, it actually makes it worse. So even if I do 1 and 25 like this, we get 1a but 50a, and that's going to make it 51a. So that's no good. And even switching the numbers around isn't going to help. Even if I put the 1 on the right, 25 on the left, that's not going to help either. So this one is actually prime as well. So don't get into the habit of thinking that the entire assignment is going to be one particular way of factoring. Um, it will be mixed up. 5x squared minus 80. Yes, we can do a distributive property factoring on this one by factoring out a 5. 5x five squared divided by 5 is x squared, and negative 80 divided by 5 is negative 16. And then we will try to see if we can factor x squared minus 16. And just like what we've done at the start of the lesson, x squared can be split up into x and x. And we're looking for factors of negative 16 that will add up to be 0. That would be positive 4 and negative 4. 4 times x is 4x. Negative 4 times x is negative 4x, and that does add up to 0. So it is 5x plus 4x minus 4. 9x squared minus 6x minus 35. We cannot do a distributive property on that one. 9x squared can be split up into 9x and x or 3x and 3x. Let's do 3x and 3x first. If that doesn't work, then we have to try 9x and x. So factors of negative 35, that will add up to be negative 6x. Let's see, that will be negative 7 and 5, as long as we put the negative 7 and the 5 like that, because that gives me 15x in the center, but negative 21x on the outside, and that does add up to negative 6x, so we have that factored correctly. And then finally, the last one, we can take out a 2 by distributive property. And when we divide everything by 2, we'll get 9x to the fourth, 12x squared plus 4. We can factor what's inside a distributive property on that. 9x squared, that splits up into 3x squared and 3x squared because x squared times x squared equals x to the fourth. 2, factors of two, 4 would be 2 and 2. 
insides would be 6x squared, as are the outsides. That does add up to 12x squared, which is my middle term. So this is one way to write the answer, or since both sets of parentheses are 3x squared plus 2s, I could write 2 times 3x squared plus 2 squared.